when I asked you, is there something your intended should probably know before you marry them that they don't know now? You said, I'm not ready to be married. That is correct, Your Honor. Did you hear that? How come you're not ready? She's the judge who gives rules on the law and life. She's intense with common sense. She's Judge Lynn Toller on Divorce Court, where real couples deal with real life. When she met Darwin in 2006, Tiffany says she instantly felt butterflies. Now, those butterflies have turned into bees as Tiffany has been stung by the fact that Darwin may be cheating on her. I don't know if I should marry him. He's very disloyal, very disrespectful. Every time I turn around, he's always talking to this person and that person. And I'm here today to see if I should really marry him or not. I am here today because I love Tiffany. I love my baby boy. But if the nagging and the complaining don't stop, I don't know if I want to marry her. Can this couple get back to butterflies, or will Tiffany feel the bite of Darwin's betrayal forever? Today on Divorce Court Before Your Vows. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Tiffany Sullivan and, and Darwin Oriana. And the two of you have been together for two years. You have a five-month-old son together. And you want to get married, but you're not sure whether or not that is the thing to do. You have given me your marriage license with permission to tear it up if I feel marriage is not appropriate in your circumstance or to return it to you if I think it is a viable union. You have also uh, finished your before your vows test. I'm going to start with you, Ms. Sullivan. Why don't you tell me why you love him, why you're considering marriage, but you're not quite sure it's the thing to do? Your Honor, I love Darwin with all my heart, all my soul. We have a five-month-old son together. Mm -hmm. But every time I turn around, he's always talking to this person, that person. Um, I feel that he's cheating on me with a number of his ex-girlfriends. Every time I turn around, he's always texting, talking to them, saying that he's one place, but always ends up being in the vicinity of his ex-girlfriends. Oh, okay. Yes. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Oriana, what do you have to say about that? Your Honor, it's, it's, there's always an issue with mistrust. You know, there's times when she calls me at work, asking me, where you at, when she knows that I'm at work, you know? Mr. Oriana, do you have a habit of speaking to women that you used to date? Your Honor, I still have conversations going with these females, but there is nothing passionate going out there. So you talk to them in I passing. No, what kind of conversations do you have no, with no, your no, exes? No. OK, Your Honor, see, there's this one lady that um, I used to date before, and uh, she happens to have problems in her life. And so some of your ex-girlfriends have difficulties. And when someone that you've been close that to has correct, difficulties. Your Honor, and I'm going to school full of human services, so there's always so you're, you're providing Questions. them with a little human service. You could say that, Your Honor. Providing her with human <laughs> service. Now, when you help out ex-girlfriends, what kind of things do you do for them? There was a time when uh, she happens to be in a situation when she needed to borrow money. So I went ahead and lent her some money. He but it's not that I'm giving her he money. He lent her money, but supposedly lent her money. I have not seen not one penny of that money back. Have you heard any conversations between Mr. Oriana and any of these ladies that would lead you to believe something illicit is going on? Yes, Your Honor. What do they say to one another that bothers you so? I found an email, uh, a conversation that he was having while he was at his job uh, with his ex-girlfriends, and it was saying that they were setting up a time to meet, that he wanted to see her, she was calling him Papacito, I love you. you. And then and then at the end of the conversation, Your Honor, he puts I love you too, that he really wants to see her. If there is nothing going on between them or anything, why are you gonna text her or whatever conversation? Then I ask him about it if he if he says that he loved her just so that just to see where he's at, he said never, never. Does she call him pet names? Yes. 
She does call him. Now, pet do you names. have ex girlfriends, women out there, hither and yon, calling you Papa Pete? Oh. Well, Your Honor, <laughs> it's not my fault how she feels about me. Definitely, I don't feel the same way towards her. And see, the one okay, thing right there no is that she broke into my email, and that's how she finds out about this. She saw all of that stuff. That is correct, Your Honor. He's given me reason, Your Honor, to do things that I, I do. I always find it fascinating. People come in here either married or uh, trying to get married. And they're always talking about breaking into to, to email and passcode. I have my husband's passcode. He has mine. You, you, you're talking about saying always and forever till death do us part. You got together and created a whole new person together. What is it she can't see about what it is you're doing? Well, I don't have no problems, but it's just they doing it behind my back. You know, it's it's. He does I, have I, problems I, with you it. You would honor. have a problem with her seeing somebody calling you Papa Cito. <laughs> Your Honor, it's not the first time that happens. I mean, you know, I mean, it's just. Her way of expressing, I, I told her it's not he my fault how she feels for me. Too. I was five months pregnant with my son. We did a fundraiser. We had a fundraiser, and after the fundraiser, he went to go study at this coffee shop. Mm -hmm. I had asked him if he was having a study partner. He said no. I had a gut feeling in my stomach that something was going on, that something was wrong. I went to that coffee shop, Your Honor, and I seen her sitting right next to him. And when I approached him about it, he told me not to be all dramatic and this and that. She had walked away. I followed her. She didn't even know I was She's pregnant, Your Honor. Your Honor. She Mr. Didn't Oriana, even... do, do, do you see the problem with that? Your Honor, she thinks that I'm always out there cheating. You know, you could solve that problem by changing some of your behaviors. Like the it would one be time I easy. told her I was going to go to the coffee shop, I happens to me with one of my friends, it happens to be a bright lady, I needed the help, and she shows up. She did a big scene in front of everybody. It was hell broke loose. <laughs> When Divorce Court Before Your Vows continues, Judge Lynn digs deeper into the problems in this couple's relationship. Your Honor, she's always back. knocking behind my back. You should see our drawer. There's Twinkies. There's Moon Pies. I'm going to say, look at her. Do I look back? And look at you. No. Get, look down. And look at you. <laughs> if I had the opportunity to call somebody fat, who do you think I'd pick? And later, with their baby joining them, Tiffany and Darwin meet with the judge in chambers for a heart-to-heart. -heart. Mr. Oriana, I was, I was hot at you in there. <laughs> right. He agrees. Are you considering marriage but aren't sure if it's the right step? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com or become a fan at facebook.com slash divorce court. Divorce Court Before Your Vows is back with the case of Tiffany Sullivan, who wants to marry her fiance, but isn't sure she should because she suspects he cheats with his ex-girlfriends. But is that the only reason why Tiffany is hesitant to marry Darwin? You said in your papers that he was verbally abusive to you. Mr. Oriana, you say in your papers that you believe that Ms. Sullivan spends too much money. That is correct, Your Honor. Oh, tell me what about money? that. I get $500 uh, a month. Come on. Okay, the, one, the first time was when, even before the, our baby was born, she wanted a stroller, the type that you could jog with the stroller. Right. So we went and spent $200 Your on Honor, a stop. stroller. Does she jog? She don't even power walk with that thing. So we just <laughs> spent $200 okay. on a jogger. And she doesn't even okay. use the Is thing. that a routine thing on her part, that she buys things that she doesn't use? Or did she just make a bad There was another time, one. Your Honor, when I came in and I noticed that she had purchased a set of ink color pens. And one dollar. One why dollar Why is she going to go spend? I got tons of pens, pencils, paper. Mr. Oriana, she... I know cheap when I see it. <laughs> I'm not cheap, hang Your on, Honor. Hang on, hang on, hang on. It's that, you know. I'm going to leave it there. I'm not gonna say anymore. I'm just gonna say I know cheap when I see it. Ms. Sullivan, why don't you, you, you said in your papers that he was verbally abusive to you. Explain that to me. Yes, uh, Your Honor, I'm home 24 seven with, with our son. I had a C-section with mm -hmm. my son. So when I did get home, you know, it was very hard for me to do things that mm -hmm. I need to do. He didn't help me with my baby. That's a lie, Your Honor. He did I not. With the baby. I got up in the middle of the night to get my son. Mm -hmm. I 
changed my son's diapers mm -hmm. when he was little. I, don't I can diapers. count on my hands how many times he has changed a diaper. Mm -hmm. Your Honor, I explained to her that I was probably going to say was going to be able to do poo poo diapers because, I mean, my stomach is, you know, very. Me too. You know, it's but fascinating it's my son. to me. Men can work out in the dirt and, and, and in the sewers and blah, blah, but they can't change a poopy diaper. Your Honor, it's just, just the smell got to me, but I did it once already, so hopefully I'll fight, start doing oh, more from now on. Buck up, Mr. Oriana. Buck oh, up. He, says, he uh, says that I'm too fat. He Your Honor, she's always fat. snacking behind my back. If I, if, if you, you should see our drawer, was, there's but, but Twinkies, it, there's it, Moon now, Pies. I'm not gonna, again, I'm not going to call anybody a name. But I'm gonna say, look at her. Do I look fat? And look at you. No. Get, look down. And look at you. <laughs> now, if I'm I had the, hang I'm on, <laughs> if I had the opportunity to call somebody fat, who do you think I'd pick? <laughs> I'm not gonna answer that question. We're just gonna move on. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, so far we, you know, we've just seen pain and distress, and I would like to get a balanced picture of this before. I, you know, I give you my opinion as to whether or not this union will survive. Give me in 60 seconds why you love this woman and why you think that this might be the union for you. Well, I love this woman. She's gorgeous. She's beautiful. She's a, she's, she provides, for, I mean, I, I'm a provider, but she takes good care of me when mm -hmm. it comes to the cooking, the laundry, she gets things done. But the nagging, the controlling, and so I got about, what, 20 seconds in before we got to the complaints? No okay. It's too much, Your Honor. When divorce court before your vows continues, what brings Tiffany to tears? <laughs> If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and follow us on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court Before Your Vows returns with the case of Darwin Oriana, who is having second thoughts about marrying the mother of his child because he can't take her nagging. But is Tiffany the one who is hurting the most in this relationship? I love him with all my heart, and he hurts me. I've given up a lot for him, and I've, I've given him my all. Mrs. Sullivan, I'm going to give you a shot at it. Tell me why I shouldn't call you crazy for wanting to marry him. I love him. I want her to be I more sexy. I still get butterflies in my stomach when I see him. I really want things to work out with him. I like the way he smiles. I love his attitude, you know, towards me sometimes. It's really sweet. Sometimes. Little things that he does. Mm -hmm. Just once in a while, you know, I just want him to compliment me. I love him with all my heart. And he hurts me. I've given up a lot for him. And I've, I've given him my all. I don't talk to anybody of my exes. I don't do anything disrespectful towards him. And I just want the same respect that, he, that I give to him. What did you just hear her say, Mr. Aurelia? The truth, Your Honor. The truth? I yes, give him my she is. Do you feel, how do you feel about the fact that the manner in which you treat her makes her feel like that? Makes her feel real bad. But it's come, it has come to a point that all this fighting going on is to a point that, you know, I have anger issues, Your Honor. And she stands up to me sometimes. We'll get into little arguments over anything, and she'll come up over to my face, and I, I, it's just, I can't take that. I mean, it's too much, you know? I okay. Mean, Your Honor. In your compatibility test, I just have to note two things. When I asked uh, Ms. Sullivan if you could change anything about your intended, what would it be? I would change his whole attitude about our relationship. His whole attitude. And I believe you. Now, when I asked you, is there something your intended should probably know before you marry them that they don't know now, you said, I'm not ready to be married. That is correct, Your Honor. Did you hear that? <sighs> oh. 
How come you're not ready? There's a lot of issues that I got to deal with with myself, Your Honor. And don't get me wrong, I love this woman. She has given me the most beautiful person ever, which is my baby boy. I love them both. Mm -hmm. But it has gone to a point that, I mean, I don't know if I'm ready for this mm -hmm. because I'm afraid that the nagging and the fighting is never going to okay. stop. When Divorce Court Before Your Vows continues, Judge Lynn tells it like it is. You're ragging on her about a dollar for some pens, but you give $300 to an ex. How deep is that? Everything you do speaks. You speak. I do not value you. And after the case, Judge Lynn gets a little more than she bargains for when she meets with Tiffany and Darwin to discuss their relationship. Oh, he's trying to tell <laughs> That's all right, honey. It's okay, sorry. So, right. oh, I've been a mother. I know, I know, I know the drill. Divorce Court Before Your Vows returns with the case of Tiffany Sullivan and Darwin Oriana, who just revealed to his fiance that he is not ready to get married because he fears her nagging will never stop. Here, here's what I'm gonna say to you, Mr. Oriana. You're the root cause of all your problems. The nagging comes from insecurity, and the insecurity comes from the manner in which you behave. You have the right to talk to your ex-girlfriends, even if you're not doing anything wrong, but it hurts her. And you do so much of it that even within the context of a solid and comfortable and trusting relationship, it's still inappropriate. And love requires a certain amount of sacrifice and it requires you to compromise what you do be, in, in order to make the person to whom you have committed yourself feel okay. And all that stuff with the exes, you're ragging on her about a dollar for some pens, but you give $300 to an ex. How deep is that? She, you know, money, it, 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 Lisa, I haven't seen none but, of it. But, it. but she's your love. She's not worthy of the dollar, but the other chicks can get 300 of them. It's just, it, 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 it speaks. Every time you do, you speak, I do not value you. I do not care about you. I do not that. And let me tell you something else. If you're not ready to get married and make a lifelong commitment, don't make a new life. Because that is a lifelong commitment. Mrs. Sullivan, let me say that I know you want them and I know you I love, love them and more. I know you and and women tell me they love, they love, they love, they love, but love must be love is not just a, it, it, just an object, it is also a verb. And if he can't use it as a verb, it's not going to do you any good. You can get over being in love with people. You can you can have a good relationship with the father of your baby and not take all uh, the pain that he has to deliver you. And I gotta be frank with you. If you move backward, say you can't respect me, you can't deal with me, you'll see him change. Make sure he pays his child support. Make sure he learns how to, how to change a poopy diaper. <laughs> Papa Cito. Grow up, man up. Make no more babies until you're no longer a baby yourself. I cannot bless this union. Miss Sullivan, you're more than you think you are. Make sure you understand it and know it. This matter is adjourned. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. First of all, you know I'm in love, right? This is the most fabulous baby. Sat right down with me and had no trouble. Mr. Oriana, I was, I was hot at you in there. But you can change, though, right? Yes, Your Honor. And if there's no reason to change, other, fabulous. <laughs> right. He agrees. Yes. Oh, he's he's trying to tell you. <laughs> That's all right, honey. It's OK. Sorry. So, right. oh, no, I've been a mother. <laughs> I know, I know, I know the drill. She's not looking for much. And the things that you need to give her, for her to give you the things that you want, it's going to be so small, you'll be surprised how easily it is to do. But yes, you've sir. got to do right by her. You can do that, right? Yes. Now, don't you let him off the hook, though. I know. Don't be weak, and he'll love you and respect you more for it.